that each psychic kind of overlays their advice you know you should leave your boyfriend i'm not going to do that you should start a business no i'm not going to do that and as people we are a bit resistant to change because the entire human ethos is self-preservation it's survival so if you're saying to someone you know I, i can really see your partner is cheating on you and they go oh it's all right you know he'll he'll come back to me because the, your instinct for self-preservation is to maintain the status quo you're also not going to find any new successes or any new insights Hello, uh, welcome to Soul Awakenings with Madhya Sosan podcast. Today we have a special guest with us and her name is Inbel. Now, who is Inbel? Celebrity psychic Inbel has been one of the main personalities of the mystical world within British and international media. Since starting her psychic career in 2000, she has hosted interactive psychic tv programs has done regular predictions on talk sport radio and has written the stars for le magazine as well as being on big brothers little brother house busters and most haunted she has also been le magazine's astrologer in the uk and has acted as a guest astrologer in le magazine in japan on several occasions Inbell originally became interested in becoming a witch during the 1990s sparked by the love of tarot cards. From there she developed her skills as a psychic and a tarot card reader. I'm so excited to interview Inbell because for a long time I really wanted to know how the psychic world works, you know, how the tarot card works and the psychic readings. Um and I'm sure many of you are on the same boat as well. So let's bring her on and tap into her amazing knowledge. Hi Inbell, how are you doing today? I'm great, Nadia. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. I'm super excited for this interview because, you know, I really wanted to get someone who's a psychic and and a witch to come on the podcast because it, it's like in this in our spiritual community, it, it you know, you guys play a huge part. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm I'm so flattered that you invited me, but I I know exactly what you mean. In a way, where religion had kind of left off and the younger generation is a lot less likely to subscribe to a specific dogma and a specific set of rules that's where you kind of see psychics and witches and psychic mentors come into their own and help each person work with their own truth mm, yeah yeah absolutely um i i met you through a friend um and she recommended um i recommended uh, me to you <laughs> and you even did like a quick reading in a pre-chat and it was just bang on amazing thank you Um so to start off with Imbel um tell us a bit about yourself a brief overview for our listeners Absolutely um uh, my name is Imbel in my everyday life I live in West Yorkshire I've got four small children and um and I like to run um for the purposes of our podcast for the past 21 years my full-time job has been a tarot reader psychic and which i've worked extensively with the media working on tv shows um i did the stars for l magazine and so on i had a little radio slot um but most importantly i've been working one on one with clients helping them make decisions at the crossroads um i work with tarot cards mm-hmm. you might recognize these cards from you know advert and when they need to make fun of psychics mm-hmm. and i've got my beloved soft deck which is a huge hit um primarily with witches um if i were going to introduce myself fully it would probably take the entire podcast mm-hmm. so i'm sure you've got questions to yes. you know that that you know your listeners and viewers will be interested 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, I've I've only come across uh, psychics and psychic readings over the last couple of years since I had my own spiritual awakening. I wasn't really aware of them. Um, but when I was in a household, I was in a household of religi- religion and like religious people, like my family was religious. Um, they they always said like, oh, no, no, don't go down that path. And, you know, they they were always against it. But, you know, I, I was an atheist. I didn't really believe in anything. Before we get into the psychic, reading and everything i'm aware that you've been on a tv program such as big brother's little brother housebusters most haunted um how did all of that come about for me all of that just came about um with very simple manifestation i um grew up very atheist just like you only I grew up, thankfully, in a house that was kind of atheist like me. So there wasn't really a struggle. I was um, not religious. I was surrounded by people who weren't religious. So there wasn't so much of a dissonance. And what's interesting is that from your lived experience, you're saying that you were kind of prevented from going over to the spiritual side. In an atheist household, it's exactly the same. Don't go there that's not for us. We wake up in the morning, we work with our hands and, you know, we all sit down and um, have our tea together and then watch TV. So anything that stepped out of the normal routine uh, was, you know, a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit interesting, a little bit bizarre, but I've always had my own beliefs and my own weird connection and Growing up in a very atheist household as an atheist person, you also get to develop a lot of self-belief. Hmm. So I was raised to believe that I, I could have anything and I could do anything. And that is a massive privilege to, you know, to grow with a warm house and a tummy full and free from abuse. And so I, I really think it still comes across that I'm insanely overconfident. And that helps a lot. So I've always felt drawn to the media. And when I started, I left my day job, which was uh, working in shops, which I loved a lot as well. I absolutely loved shop work and waitressing, which were my jobs before. But when I stepped away um, and decided to do psychic readings for a living, which was uh, when I was 25, and I kind of reasoned with myself that it is a little scary but it's not going to be any less scary when I was 26. Mm. Um, So I started doing psychic readings at a psychic fair and I was there four days a week, um, four nights a week, uh, just doing readings face to face with people, uh, learning as I go, improving as I go. I would sit a table away from people who are incredible mediums and I would kind of bask in their energy and see how they worked really from the heart um there would be a stall selling crystals so my knowledge of crystals improved and one day very early in the morning remember I worked evenings in the psychic fairs very early in the morning I had uh, a phone call just locally from the yellow pages and I was like "Uh, that's all right and then I thought wait wait maybe this was a sign and if we have like a long conversation like 24 hours of non-stop talking you'll see this as a theme because that is who I am I will stop and go hey maybe this is a sign and um, I couldn't ring back the yellow pages because the way that they ring you is you know for a sales team but I did ring my local yellow pages and I just said what can you give me for free went with that as if by magic maybe three four months later I had a phone call from researchers for Big Big Brother's Little Brother who found my number in the yellow pages wow and that and that was step one now I've dotted my life with that maybe it's a sign I love reading signs from the universe because I feel that the universe is a real living um, all-knowing thing that communicates to us and I know that when you're truly atheist maybe it doesn't really make sense but for me it was never deified 
the way I approach it is not via a God figure or, uh, or even a pantheon of gods and goddesses. I approach it from my belief that we are all one. Mm. And so anything I do impacts you mm. and other people and my husband and the people that then work with him and then their children and it ripples through everything and anything that has happened in the universe and anything that is about to happen in the universe all meet all the time and all intersect so I um oh do you know was it big brother's little brother then no that was mystic challenge Mm. it was mystic challenge and it was a brand new program on what was then the very very new living tv living uk was sky Mm. channel which as the years um wore on became very famous for most haunted for a lot of psychic programming and mystic challenge was their first program Mm. so i went to audition I found the audition process very easy because all I had to do was do a reading. I can do that. I had to do a reading for the researcher. And she kind of uh, stood up all pale and got a couple of other researchers. Uh, can you do for them as well? And can you go without the tarot? Yeah, no problem. Um, so out of lots of um, lots of psychics that they rang from the yellow pages, I was uh, selected to uh, go through Six, challenge, six challenges, which was myself at 25 against um, against other psychics, people that had already been established, people that have been teaching tarot. Um, so out of the six challenges, I lost four, but I won two. And the format of the show was really like a game show. Um, the two psychics would go into a room with a guest. You couldn't see who the guest was, Balaclava, um, the, <laughs> the full face mask, which at the time <laughs> was really just for surgeons. <laughs> um, and either the person would shuffle the cards and then leave or uh, with the mediums, the medium would sit there and read out the um, read out what they're picking up to a researcher who wrote it down. Then we'd go on camera. I would say what I picked up. The other psychics would say what they picked up. And then a panel of uh, innocent bystanders headed by a specifically skeptic journalist. So it would be like a journalist from the sun or, you know, somebody who wasn't likely to be, t- to be taken for a ride. They would decide who the winner was. Wow. They're on show because I'm a friendly person I made friends with another psychic who had a radio slot when she went on our holidays I once filled for her radio slot and so on and so forth um so each job kind of led to the next job uh before too long the press is interested in what's going on on the tv so um so yeah really everything comes out of one moment where uh where I took uh, where I where I I had it in my mind to just listen to messages from the universe yeah it's a bit like um you know when you you're ready for it universe gives you that one one thing and it's your choice you always have a choice right your your choice to whether take it take action on it or not so uh, and Absolutely. you took action on it and it opened up like so many doors for you and which is which is amazing all, all the doors all the doors and that's why I say I, I have got this faith because you you will always find the knock-on effect good luck begats good luck um, and friendliness begats friendliness but sometimes you just need for one small door to open mm. and that door is opening and you're not going through it your choice yeah 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 and but your soul kind of knows right if you're making the wrong choice you just know you just know you don't feel happy after t- making that choice it's your intuition it's like oh my god take it, take it, take it. and you're like your mind is like no 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 <laughs> that was exactly it because when the yellow pages rang and I thought put the phone down um I I just it it was early in the morning I was due to sleep a lot longer and I sat bolt upright and I thought that was not the right answer. Mm, 
Mm, yeah, absolutely. I remember watching uh, Charmed on Living TV. I mean, Charm- I think it was on Living TV, right? It was like, I don't know. I think it was always in me to watch these kind of shows. It was just like, yes, my soul's calling to Charmed. <laughs> Which is, I absolutely loved it. Um, that was my favorite TV show. Um, oh, really? Yeah, oh, it was. It was lovely. when I was young. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I was like, I want to be Piper who frees everything. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's just, it's a fantasy, but there's also such an obvious overcurrent of female empowerment, Mm. which it's not that long since you were young, but Mm. even just in the last 20 years, we've come a long, long way, and there's still a long way to go, but we've come a long, long way in terms of women speaking their own truth, having their own power, standing in their own light, Mm. and all of those shows even though you know we can't really give them the credit we can give credit to the activists but we can give some credit to giving us something to emulate yeah giving us something to look up to yeah um so now um obviously we were talking about psychic readings and everything um what is psychic readings and when you do the reading how do you get the predictions Right. So um, psychic readings are basically my higher self having a conversation with your higher self. Um, The process of a psychic reading is for me to interpret the same signs that I interpret for me to help me with decision making, interpret them for you. The tool of choice for me is a deck of tarot cards, which is a very pretty thing to deal with. Um, So it'll show me uh, maybe this symbol, and for you, it would mean financial abundance, and maybe for somebody else, it would mean um, physical health. That connection with the tarot is something that you kind of develop over years and with experience. For example, um, I I have a friend who reads the same deck of cards, and I was chatting to her like little psychic chit chat once and she said oh yeah I got the card with the teeth and I was like there is no card for teeth and she pulled one up and there's little rose petals on the card but when she would read for clients she found that very often it would come up for people that needed to go to the dentist And so for her, it was the card with the teeth and she was always accurate. And in the way that I would read this card, um, which is an inability to communicate and, you know, difficult thoughts in your mind, that was always accurate. So um, so the um, tarot deck is a very kind of interactive, very fluid tool. And when I sit down to read for you. I leave myself to one side because my signs are not your signs. And I just kind of step into your aura, so to speak, take on your experiences and um, look at the symbols and they will come up in my mind the way that they would have come up in your mind if, if I had lived through your life. Now, because I believe that all of us are one, I am you, you are me, we're all touching each other. I also believe that time is not um, is not limiting either. So I can read all the things that have been and also the things that will be. Obviously, things that have been cannot be changed and things that will be can and must be changed. But the way I look at a prediction is almost like a warning or a road sign, Um, I'll see what is about to happen if you keep going the way you're going. If you uh, stick with the plans and follow the plans, if your past experiences suggest that you are somebody that follows through with plans, um, uh, if, um, say, around family or war situations, everything remains the same. And then, I like to kind of go back and have a look at what the future would look like if you change something. I like to think of it as Back to the Future. I don't know if you're a fan of that trilogy, 
but I am a huge fan of Back to the Future and the messages that it gives us in terms of the choices we make right now, mm. teeny tiny ones, choices we make right now and how they change. So, for example, if you were um, asking about, you know, the simplest thing, the success of your podcast, and I could see a certain amount of success um, nationally. And then um, you would say to me, you know, I have had contact from an international agent. Do you think I should pick it up? We look at how international success would work for you. And then you make an informed choice. Because, you know, like you said, your intuition kind of tells you when you're making the wrong choice, but you don't know for sure. You know, you kind of when you're making the wrong choice, you feel a bit uncomfortable. You feel mm. uneasy. You think that yeah, that wasn't right. But you don't know how things will turn out. The, um, the tarot prediction helps you separate the um, one outcome from the other outcome. And then you know exactly where you're going. I mean, obviously, there's so many other choices along the way. But yeah. in a nutshell, yeah. that's how it works. Yeah, I know. I know. Some most people probably just say, "Oh, well, that didn't work anyway." But so it's the choices that you make every single day, right? Like you know, you could be going. This is the prediction that you're getting, but then it's like, "Oh, I'm gonna choose something different," and then that's the another timeline just opens up because it's all about the timelines. Exactly. It's about, it's, yeah. yeah, exactly. You've got so many possible futures running in parallel which one do you choose and there's a kind of a funny tiktok meme circulating at the moment is tiktok meme a meme or is it a tiktok um and no, no, i'm not on it <laughs> the, all right good <laughs> i i um i'm very big on instagram so i it, by very big i mean a big fan of instagram not that i'm big um so sometimes people upload their tiktoks and there's a very funny one circulating through um spiritual um accounts where the voiceover is, I want things to change. I, I, no, I'm not going to do that. No, I'm not going to do that. No, I'm not going to do that. And the, each psyche kind of overlays their advice. You know, you should leave your boyfriend. I'm not going to do that. You should start a business. No, I'm not going to do that. And as people, we are a bit resistant to change because the entire human ethos is self-preservation, it's survival. So if you're saying to someone, you know, I, I can really see your partner is cheating on you, and they go, Oh, it's all right, you know, he'll he'll come back to me because the, your instinct for self-preservation is to maintain the status quo, you're also not going to find any new successes or any new insights. You work on your mindset to be more confident, to be less fearful of, uh, of those consequences. And you do have to take that chance if you want to um, open that alternative timeline. It's, it's really no small thing. It's, it's incredible that any of us do anything at all. Yeah, I totally agree. Like, uh, can you do like... Um... A read it quickly reading on me because I'm really excited for this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let me do that. Yeah. If you're happy for me to do it with a soft deck, because that is absolutely my favorite deck yeah, and the one absolutely. that I find easy yeah. to link with. Do you want uh, a little general? Do you want to ask a question? What would you like to do with your little reading? Uh, oh, I don't know. No. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe do something general. Um, general. Yeah. Let's do a bit of general, bit of future. Yeah, because they link well yeah, together. Yeah, that would be good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Right. And this is, for me, almost a break because having to hold a conversation and explain really kind of my innermost processes can be a little bit scary because, you know, what, what if I say something ridiculous? But when I sit down and the tarot tells me what to say, it's easy. Hmm. It's easy for me. Right. Now, first of all, it says here, that at the moment, too many people's opinions are starting to um, kind of tweet around your head and your natural, creative, passionate, um, super friendly persona 
is starting to feel a little bit oppressed by it. If you are able to take a break just from listening, block your DMs, you know, social media, detox, whatever it is, if you're able to stop the chirping, it would do you the world of good because your creativity is very dependent on you being able to hear your inner voice and your inner voice alone. There is a collaborative element to what you do, of course, but other people's ideas are theirs. They're not yours. And the more you're bombarded with them, the more they will oppress your natural urges and will turn you into a, a, a mishmash of um, different styles that were you know, great to experiment, but weren't your style. The more you listen to others, the more you forget who you are. And it, it's going to be more complicated because people will be throwing money at you to listen to their opinions. Mm-hmm. it's not worth it mm. it's not worth it take the money nod and remember who you are so wherever that space is for you that you're able to just think your thoughts whether you journal on a yellow pad or whether your ideas go on you know on a specific app stick with that if you want to listen to their ideas it's all right but you don't have to accept them and you certainly can't be bribed for them so sorry I was a bit no it's fine it's fine dark for um you know for doing it all out in public but it says that you are look at that a happy passionate creative person your own self is impossible to dominate I was trying to think what the right word for it is, but I can't pronounce it. Indomitable, Indom- something like that. You're, <laughs> you're impossible yeah. to dominate. However, going all the way back to childhood trauma, you weren't listened and you weren't believed. And so that little girl inside, it's not that she's not fully healed. For the most part, she doesn't really bother you. But... When it's too many people's opinions and all of a sudden their egos are like, don't listen to that one because, you know, they never had any success. Listen to me. Oh, yeah, no, don't listen to that one. Listen to me. When those arguments go, that little girl goes, oh, come on, my dear, you don't know anything. Just listen to them. (laughs) And that little girl, it's not that she's wrong, but she's grown up now and she's doing amazing things. She's had her process. So let's take it towards the future because I have every faith that your decision will be correct. Right. First of all, I actually feel like even though you're very different to your upbringing um, and even culturally, um, I actually feel like your relatives could give you better advice than any of the experts (laughs) no it's true because what it shows is that your creativity and your strong like spiritual connection didn't start with you so there is a line of spiritual women in the family and they will give you better advice yes they'll frame their advice in a different spiritual way to what you you know know to be true for you but you can unwrap it and take their advice so I feel like there's going to be a lot of support for you from much closer field than what you think and that will remind you who you are again and it's almost like you need to go back to that old conflict and kind of find what the lesson was there all along because the path that you're on is the path you're staying on You don't really need that alternative thing. I think it's incredible at such a young age to have set yourself on a path that will take you, you know, to to a long and illustrious career. But the hanged man just shows us that nothing particularly needs to change. Now, this is kind of a career thing because 
you stay on the one path, you're on cruise control, you're, it's fully automated. And then you say to yourself, and totally out of the blue and without any signs or anything, just because you say to yourself, you know, I had, I'd made myself a little promise to not stick with anything for more than three years and to try something else. And when that hanged man is the right way up, we've got the ang at the bottom, which is good luck. And we've got all the rays shining from it. And you basically take what you have and by choice, not with a sign and not by necessity and not by coercion and not by bribery, you decide to turn it on its head and make things not just different, but even opposite. And that is even more successful. But that's too soon for you to know. Okay. <laughs> get away yeah, and so then like <laughs> that's it don't listen to it again um but yeah. yeah that's um that's kind of how reading is i believe that the tarot's kind of got its own wisdom mm -hmm. or even its own um godliness in a way in that it'll give you the information that you can accept in public and it would be a little bit different to a reading that you would have had in person yeah because because there's just so many messages to be receiving that you know we just sort of scratch the surface but that's the kind of stuff that yeah. um that's the kind of stuff that comes out you 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 were completely bang on about so many opinions and things coming oh. at me and it was it was on point because i was actually thinking yesterday oh my god i'm asking too many people about this uh, this this uh, thing that i'm struggling with and there are so many different opinions coming at me and it's confusing the hell out of me <laughs> so you are yeah, like, really yeah. bang on but about no it. this is it now is your moment to turn off commenting <laughs> yes i'm i'm gonna go on every detox possible <laughs> yeah yeah that's it yeah. enough answers everybody enough yeah. answers yeah. i will be on the other side of this yeah. door yeah what happens is like your in my intuition then is like oh my god can you listen to me and not other people like then my i switch off my intuition and then and then I'm doing things that I'm so out of alignment because I'm I'm listening to this person or that person. And, you know, it's, it's yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah. bang on. Oh, my God. That was Thank so good. You. So um, I've heard this term as psychic spying. What really is psychic spying? Right. So psychic spying is, I would say, in the ethical gray area which I like to <laughs> live my life in. No, it's a joke. I'm like a super ethical person. Um, but what it is, is finding out what other people are up to. It is very, very um, useful in uh, relationships where the trust has gone. So we can find out if your partner is cheating or the exact opposite, we can find out if you're full of self-doubt and in fact your partner is an absolute saint that would never cheat. And also I've had a lot of that, um, I've had to do a lot of psychic spying um, for people that work for companies with very unethical practices, um, forger their signature or um, get them in trouble or send an email that wasn't really theirs. So finding out who it was, where you would find the evidence. Um, sometimes the message is that it's much better to cut your losses and get out of a company that would do stuff like that. Um, but for me, psychic spying is kind of a big part of, um, of being able to make those choices and find your path. If you are in a relationship that doesn't suit you, let's say it like this. The let's say somebody goes to um, on holiday and they behave a little bit differently to how they do in every day. And the thought would come in their minds that if my girlfriend could see me now, she'll be furious. That's the kind of stuff I tell you about. Um, or for example, if, um, if your children have started, you know, prancing around with the wrong crowd, I can kind of tell you, where to find them, uh, who to talk to, to, you know, to get the evidence and so on. Um, so, so that's where it is as spying. It's mostly used 
with love relationships and um and families but it can lend itself to anything it's just a way of finding information wow that is amazing and uh, can you like say for example i don't know there are a couple and are you um i've come across this you you give their name and their picture and everything and you can sort of tune into their energy and see what they thinking or what they're doing sort of thing is is that kind of absolutely how it is? i do photograph readings anyway so uh if there's a photograph of somebody i can tell you some information about them without even going into the cards um uh, because the information kind of presents itself um visually but if uh you need a reading doing for someone else and a picture a date of birth and a name will be plenty to go on because you know most of the work i do especially in pandemic but also before is by email mm -hmm. so when i do the reading for you i'm not sitting with you i'm sitting you know in in my house at 2 a.m. um you know trying to keep my feet warm and um typing what i can see so i can just as easily do it for someone else as for you but in terms of spying you're going to like this story i used to work in um in a very large store in their little psychic um compartment and um just before we shot one evening uh, a couple came at me and said can you do us a reading together i was like all right mm -hmm. sit um and they pulled out a pair of boxer shorts <laughs> and the man said these boxes aren't mine i found them in my house can you do a reading in front of both me and my wife to tell me where they've come from is she having an affair and she was obviously beside herself they must have been arguing for ages before they've made the decision to go and ask a psychic about it because because who else do you ask mm -hmm. and um and she was crying and very very upset and i had a little look and i said they're not yours you're right but she's also not having an affair do you guys use a uh, laundrette or a laundry service and they're like oh yeah there's a laundry service in our um apartment block and i was like yeah okay that was in and out in 15 minutes and if, I, honestly if i tell you the amount of stuff i lost and gained yeah. in laundromats i was surprised that they <laughs> even got to an argument but they came to me with that and because it was 15 minutes and they'd already booked me for um half an hour then the man not the lady the gentleman said all right can i have 15 minutes by myself just to ask about work stuff you know while my wife walks and um and he had the rest of the time just sort of asking work stuff but that was psychic spying that hopefully saved the marriage wow. for a little while anyway <laughs> <laughs> well at least it is well it was it, i think their problems went way before the uh, with with that anyway <laughs> yeah, yeah this, and possibly this, after yeah. yeah yeah very true observation yeah um so now um in our spiritual community i have come across this term psychic vampires uh can you explain to the listeners what psychic or energy vampire is absolutely um you know when you're sitting with somebody that's always down or when they talk to you they're always like me 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 and me 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 and what about you oh yeah me too um that kind of interaction leaves the the person on the receiving end feeling very very drained so you'd mm. start your morning feeling all positive and then you look at your phone you're like oh yeah they're ringing again i wonder what they've got a whinge about but it's like it's a nice friend so you pick up the phone and you listen or they come and visit you and it's either all about them or always negative and that just sucks away your um your energy. joy it mm -hmm. sucks away your energy like a vampire would suck away your blood mm -hmm. some people do it because issues and you know it can be very legitimate but for you as the receiver of you know of psychic vampirism you've got to be able 
to set boundaries. They can be physical boundaries, you know, pick up the phone and say, I'm just about to, you know, go pick up the kids uh, or let the person in and say, oh, I've only got uh, half an hour because I've got a client coming. Um, so that's physical boundaries or mental boundaries in not picking up the phone at all, um, mm-hmm. in um, not letting it sort of go into you and just offering the support that they need from the outside in. It's that gap between empathy and sympathy. You want to help the person out of the ditch, not lie in the ditch with them. Um, So psychic vampirism is not necessarily a psychic problem. It's just that psychics are very empathic. Hmm. So we can end up in that situation very often. But in turn, if you're a very empathic person, you find yourself um, open to psychic vampirism quite often. You're probably a bit psychic, too. Mm, Yeah, yeah. And I think a lot of sensitive and empaths are naturally, as you mentioned, Um, we were like a sponge and anyone who's like, uh, who's carrying not they're not bad people, they they're carrying such a negative energy around them. It automatically is like going in your aura as well. It's like, Oh, no, (laughs) you can feel it going in, you can, you can pick up on it. And most people think it's their own emotions, but it's not it's somebody else's emotions and feelings that coming in and you know what I sometimes do is ask like Archangel Michael to could you just clear this it's not mine and and I give you full permission to do it thank you very much <laughs> and it's, it, it works it works great anything that is not yeah. yours it, it just goes absolutely and when people ask about cord cutting it can be that your own situation from the past is still kind of drawing energy from you memories or knowing that somebody difficult um you know is is still talking about you behind your back all of those are kind of psychic vampirism as well and there are different methods to cord cutting i quite like um the idea of visualizing you and the person who is drawing from you kind of in a figure of eight and then you invite the angel with the sword to kind of cut it and you've still got your circle of protection around you and the other person has got their circle of protection around them but you've been sliced away and that's one way of cord cutting um sometimes they say when you cord cut it comes back stronger so how can what can you do to not like sort of um for it to attach really quickly back again and for it to come in with a bang for me if it's a difficult situation i would go with a uh, candle magic and what you can do uh for for cord cutting or for any kind of banishing go straight for the black candle don't you know don't look for nuances just go for the black candle for the separation and you take a little clothespin or something and score either seven or 14 marks on the candle and burn just that bit every day so that you're making so you're making the banishment stronger and stronger each day perhaps from the full moon to the dark moon because from the full moon to the dark moon we're kind of shrinking something away so we're shrinking that person in person's influence or if you choose to go from the new moon to the full moon then you're working on increasing so it's increasing maybe the you know the wall between you increasing the gap between you um Mm. but yeah any anything that comes at you you can kind of break it you just have to get bigger and bigger guns yeah and and also someone mentioned about the um visualizing a root of the of the uh cord you're pulling it out or something like that you know oh Um, i like that i've never tried that but that sounds good yeah yeah yeah. someone like like pulling a tree out with all the roots yes yes yeah yeah because obviously you're only cutting the branch and it's like it's gonna come back again so the root you pull the root out it's, it's yeah um so um You know, uh, when we think about witchcraft in our uh, society, you know, our society automatically thinks it's dark or it's wrong. Um, There's a lot of fear-based thinking around it. What really is witchcraft? Witchcraft is, um, uh, there's so many definitions, but for me, let's start with 
what magic is because we all use magic in some or another way um, religious people will use magic in prayer or in maybe incense and different traditional things um, as witches we use magic uh, by the dictionary definition of causing desired change to happen in accordance with the will um, so, so our free will is very important um, witches can be practitioners of magic witches can be people who follow any of the um, nature-based or pagan religions um, like witchcraft, druidry, um, heathenism. Um, a lot of witches do both. They have that um, kind of spiritual affiliation with the idea of witchcraft and also magic, but you can be a witch who doesn't have that kind of religious experience, but does magic. And you can be a witch that never does magic and just believes in um, following nature, following the seasons, the moon, um, full equality, um, balance in everything. So witchcraft really is a very, very broad um, description of lots of different um, spiritual teachings. They've they've come a long way, haven't they? Because like going back, they used to get burnt. Um, um, I, like I don't know if you want to talk much about that. Like you know, they used to get burnt, but now it's like uh, anyone can in the out in the open say I'm a witch, and you know, it's like free will. Like you know, you can do whatever you want. There's freedom behind it. It's it's actually not that long before. Um, it's not that long. It's not that long since uh, you could be tried for witchcraft. I think it's 60 something years since really? it actually, yeah, yeah, since it actually became not a thing to try someone for witchcraft. So the times of the hangings, the burnings, um, that was quite rife. And a lot of the women who were hanged, burned, drowned um, were not necessarily witches because all you needed was for somebody to um, accuse you mm. and um, there was something called the um, I was, I was going to say the witch trials but no it was like a like a swim test uh, where a witch would get bound up in a bag and thrown in the river and if she floated she was definitely a witch and you know prosecuted mm. and if she drowned she's probably not a witch and cleared but dead um so it was really not just in a symbolic way but in a very real way a campaign of hate against women mm. and especially it would be women who had affinity with nature uh people uh, sorry women who were single or lonely or old or unattractive um, there were different signs that you could inspect someone for um, whether they were a witch and very worryingly having a mole was one of them mm. so uh, so I don't think anyone was really safe because I don't think skincare then was what it is now so that's the time of the witch trials uh, there were some very scary chauvinistic figures around there Matthew Hopkins was the witch finder general and it was somebody whose job it was to bring uh, to bring witches to trial mm. but yeah if you fast forward it to um just 65 years is it 65 years could it be 70 I just remember that when I used to go to witch fest a lot which was 2001 2002 and a bit before and a bit after we uh celebrated 50 years the repeal of the witchcraft mm. act mm. so so it's still not really long maybe 60 uh maybe 70 years still mm. within living memory uh women could still get prosecuted for witchcraft so since since then we've come a hugely long way and about 17, 18 years ago, um, when I started working, more like 16, when I started working on Psychic TV channel, we weren't allowed to talk about witchcraft. There were 
um, there were rules handed down to us from, um, from the TV regulator that said not to talk about it. Mm. Whereas, you know, a, a short 15 years later, Miley Cyrus is singing, I'm a witch, I'm a witch. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and everyone with an affinity for crystals um, can very rightly and legitimately claim themselves as a witch. And there is a massive reclamation mm. of um, women sort of grabbing that spirituality as witches and also men. Yeah, that is a, that's in, another thing. Men I didn't really come across that. And but like as um, as humanity as a whole, we we are we are thriving right now. Even though it doesn't feel like the world's going to you know <laughs> it's going insane right now, but we're thriving because like we have like um you know like witchcraft like coming into the surface, like more accepted, and the LGBT movement and the other things like feminism, like everything that's coming up, right? Like you know it's it's heading in the right direction. It's and it's heading really fast. It's heading in the right direction on the one hand, but for me, you know, again, Wicca is about perfect balance. The amount of hate and pushback that we see that minorities dare to ask for power of their own mm. um, is, is frightening. Mm. And when feminism went through the previous very big leap, maybe in the 90s, um, and the original backlash was out, um, hatred against women um, became just a bit more open. So now that a lot of sex criminals are in prison, finally, mm -hmm. there's still people that deride the Me Too movement as a bit of hysteria. Mm -hmm. And where I think, you know, we're all wanting to do better and try better Disney um, have put um, uh, what do you call it like little notices on their movies where um, their racial stereotyping is now harmful but they don't want to put the movies away so they've put notices uh, to you know to say this isn't right anymore but we're trying mm -hmm. to do it the Simpsons are replacing their um, their what they're white actors I was going to say white actors but it's not they're white and Jewish actors um, who are playing people of a different ethnicity with actors of that ethnicity mm. so we're doing so much and like you say you know we're really thriving and on the other hand mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I I am from a Jewish background and what I see going on in the UK in universities regarding anti-Semitism is making me very frightened mm. for my children. So, so yeah, it's kind of it's, developing in both ways. I believe that good will prevail. Yeah. But that's just yeah. me. Yeah, and I think I think we to have a balance or in the universe, you need to have light and the dark, because um, yes. otherwise we'll be in a different realm, right? We wouldn't be in the physical yeah. plane. So um, you have to have the light that's shining, and you have the dark. And I was telling my friend the other day, like how um, you know when you're really light, you you're shining your light. The darkness, the people who hate you or whatever they lash on to you and they want to bring you down because they're in the darkness you know so there is always going to be that battle in this physical plane anyway so um, absolutely yeah, yeah yeah and in in a lot of ways it's actually observing the hate that is making those university students stand up mm -hmm. and go and march for people who are not in their community but they see have been marginalized for for centuries and want better for them and want to do better in themselves so yeah i have yeah. a lot of faith in in the next generation oh fantastic yeah i do as well i think a lot of good it's age of aquarius we're rebellious <laughs> we're finally <getting> <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, so um i know uh moon cycles are huge uh for witches uh can you explain why that is absolutely um witches have traditionally been women, even though we absolutely love um, having our men folk there. And women have that affinity with the moon because 
because periods um, and um, obviously you don't have to menstruate to be a woman we've all gone through our um, mm-hmm. through our stuff but um, traditionally the woman psyche is affected by the moon which is traditionally who were um, more female work in the nighttime druids who do similar stuff but are traditionally more of a masculine um, or a male priesthood work in daytime at sunrise so we've always been close to the moon in a very physical way and a lot of people a lot of women feel the moon in their bodies moon um energy is used in magic a lot a lot Mm. when you uh go through the period of the new moon that's when you do um spells and magic for new beginnings new business new baby new house as the moon grows you've got the period of the waxing moon so you do magic for things to grow could be you know your garden um could be your um creative project at the time of the full moon it's good for like all the magic there's you know there's no need to separate and then at the time of the waning moon as it shrinks we'll do spells for uh for things shrinking it's a good time for weight loss spells as long as you're safe and you know you're gorgeous just the way you are Mm -hmm. it's a good time for um maybe getting rid of procrastination or qualities that you know don't serve you and then the time of the dark moon is great for um banishing if you still feel an attachment to an ex dark moon write his name on a piece of paper set fire to it keep safe as well <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> always have water around yeah. um so the cycles of the moon are just as handy as the cycles of the sun where as the sun grows from um winter solstice we do the same kind of magic with it but the moon regenerates every um 29 30 days so it's just a lot more handy you don't need to wait for winter solstice you wait for the next dark moon you do your magic you know 30 days then you're golden amazing (laughs) you explained it so well there (laughs) it's perfect it's perfect i'm a great believer that before you come into this physical world uh your soul chooses the path that will help you to grow the most um so do you believe that we only plan major events and the rest we manifest while we're here i believe that um that yes the great brush strokes of of how we're going to live and where we're going to end up are kind of decided at birth um there will be some um elements and some events that will kind of shape the way for you but i also really really believe in the concept of free will and you can you know grow in the most hateful family and end up being a peace loving equalities person and the other way around it took me a long long time to get my head around astrology because I thought, well, it's not all written beforehand, but astrology shows you how it's not all written beforehand, but some big things happen when they need to happen. For example, if you are going to go around the world in 2020, it doesn't matter how much free will you exercised, you'd be stuck somewhere along the line. Mm. So some big things are you know kind of dotted about the place and in between them you choose how much you're um you're going to grow so I agree with you that um it's kind of decided before we're born because I also believe that the actual time that we're born has a big impact on that and because the time we're born also affects our personality I feel like that's kind of linked as well whether you're going to be somebody who has got that personality to stand up to culture and to say sorry guys that's just not who I am Mm. or whether you're somebody who is happy to just go with the flow um you know for life yeah yeah I I kind of when I was uh unconscious they say um 
when I was going through all my adversity, you know, like losing my dad, becoming a carer, and then cooped up at my house for like years with anxiety, severe anxiety, depression, I couldn't see it. But now when I had my awakening, I could go back and see these big events that my, I, I don't know how to explain it. It's my soul. Like it just knows that this period from this period was like my dad's gonna get ill and he's gonna die from this period to that period the major events that happened in my life that shaped me had to happen otherwise I wouldn't go on to film fulfill my purpose in life you know absolutely yeah I um I listened to uh Stephen Colbert the comedian who I love Mm -hmm. talk about um the plane crash that took his dad and two eldest brothers Mm -hmm. um And he said that it's, and I might not get the quote exactly right because he is such a wizard of words, but he said that it was the thing in his life that he's most thankful for that he wishes he, that he wishes didn't happen. Mm -hmm. Losing a quarter of his family at a young age shaped him in so many ways and shaped the rest of the family and had um, contributed to him being very close with his mom but obviously um, if he could go back and cancel it he absolutely would and I really felt it the way he said it yeah yeah you just know your soul just knows you know uh, when, once you tap into once you remember who you are um, so uh, now um 2020 has been um, most difficult year to navigate through energetically. I mean, all of our stuff been coming up so much of it. <laughs> I can't even begin to tell you. Um, but something went big went down on the 21st of December. Can you tell us about that? Absolutely. So um, when you look at the planets, um, there's two huge planets in our solar system Jupiter and Saturn they can be seen with the naked eye and they uh, they were conjunct which means they were um, very very close like less than one degree apart so to the naked eye they looked um, they looked like they were one planet unfortunately not to my naked eye I was out and everything it was so cloudy here Mm. (laughs) I held vigil and didn't get to see it but it's a time of, of really sort of plague, pestilence. Um, it's when things sort of really hit home. And um, just here in the UK, it preceded uh, a week of potential devastation. I mean, the whole year kind of led up to it. Mm. Um, but in November, and that's for your international viewers, in November, people in the UK were told that despite there being a virus raging around, um, multiple households can meet for five days over the Christmas period, Mm -hmm. which did not happen over (laughs) Eid, over Hanukkah, but that's all right. Yeah. And um, as we got close to it, the instructions changed, but people had already booked travel agreed with family bought you know bought freezer full of food and people still met up for those five days even though the instructions changed and uh and that's when we had the 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 third wave second half second half of the second wave um at the moment and again hopefully um when when we watch this pod uh, this video or listen to the podcast in the future um we we will laugh because this is when it stopped but um at the moment we are 11 months into the pandemic again in the UK since the um first first confirmed case uh, was identified and we are on a lot of deaths. Last night, it showed 120,000. Yeah. And a good quarter of them mm. are since that, um, since since the, that yeah. dreadful, since that dreadful week um, oh, where, the, where Saturn, Saturn and Jupiter were conjunct, people met up. Um, and um, turns out you can't negotiate with a virus. Yeah. So, yeah, I, it, so was, it did. Yeah, I it totally like, yeah. 
and you know that that week or those couple of weeks were not great in the US either it was i don't know what it is i felt so weird around that week i i was supposed to go to spain <laughs> with the oh. spain was that bonus <laughs> Oh, I spirit hope and wish for you that you get to see We lost the money as well. Soon. Like it was just there was huge like that week was just the energy. If you're a sensitive empath, you would notice the energy, the intense energy coming in. It was intense. It was that just devastation was, after devastation. Yeah, yeah it was. And we're we're kind of climbing away from that moment, but we're climbing away from that moment bruised and battered and very confused or kind of yeah. looking back at those couple of weeks thinking what happened yeah mm. so even though this is a you know a, a few months after the ripple effect of it yeah. it yeah. is it's still felt um yeah. so the good news is that this kind of conjunction happens every 400 years so you don't need to particularly save up you know for another year <laughs> yeah. Like that yeah which and, is good. and also yeah also not your children yeah and also we're like entering the age of, that was the time period of entering this big switch basically because we were for thousands of years we were in divine masculine energies the structure and the action so i think there was a lot of talk about the switch between that to divine feminine energies as well so that's the age of aquarius and the fem fem feminine energies that's coming in as well and it's going to be here for like so so long which is which is what we really need you know um right now there's the um the planets obviously don't go back and forth the planets mm -hmm. go the exact same way yeah. but from where we view them on earth because earth is always rotating on its axis and going around the sun mm -hmm. as we chart the heavens the planets appear as if they're going back and forth mm -hmm. and so even the age of aquarius will kind of dipping in and out of mm. other planets and those um like little dips into other energy are you know kind of preparing us mm. for that big switch yeah yeah okay <laughs> exciting times and intense times ahead that's all yeah. i'm gonna say <laughs> that's a um, very good headline for it <laughs> <laughs> yeah well you know come on light workers we're on, we're on it now <laughs> We're um, on it. yeah so um have you uh come across many people who don't believe in witchcraft or psychic readings and uh, things like that yes and no i mean like i said my family my uh, immediate family and also the more extended family don't really believe in that but they also I, I was sort of raised, I was the first child of my parents, first grandchild for all of my grandparents. So I was raised um, kind of pampered and they they always said, you know, Inbal is a very clever girl. Inbal is a very clever girl. I was like top of my school in that. And they don't believe in it, but they think, well, if I'm messing around with it, maybe there's something in it. Mm. And I think that's the sort of one big strength of Jewish families that can, on the one hand, be, you know, very judgmental, very confusing and all the Holocaust trauma. But on the other hand, are incredibly and automatically proud of their offspring. And they go, yeah, I don't really think there's anything in it, but you know, my Inbal does it. So <laughs> it must yeah. be legit. Yeah. Um, so in the family, I've had kind of a soft ride with the non-believers in the greater world. I just don't bump into that many people that mm. don't believe in it. And like you said, in that respect, the world is thriving. And whereas 20 years ago, it would be kind of funny and almost ridiculous when I said I'm a witch. Mm. Now I'm a witch. Yeah. Big deal. Mm -hmm. um, I was in the Daily Mail um, last week and the journalist said, don't read the comments. Mm. And I didn't, but my husband did. And he said that really sort of the worst of the comments were, um, oh, I, I'm a Capricorn and I'm not like that at all. I'm an Aries and I'm not like that at all. And I'm thinking, well, if that's really mm. 
the worst that they're coming at, mm. maybe the world is changing. Yeah, maybe it's getting a bit better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, which is great, which is great. And kind of when you're in that line of work, you attract the people who are already in this sort of work, and they already know about it. You don't, you don't attract normal people who will just like you know because they're on a to completely different paths so they're on their other soul path and you attract what you need to attract um so yeah which is good which is really really good um so uh we're heading towards the end now in bao um uh, i want to ask you a quick rapid fire questions before we um we end <laughs> uh okay so are you ready so this this could be like the quickest like uh, rapid fire so it's only for like five questions yeah <laughs> okay uh, that, yeah you don't have to build it up to an apology that's yeah. it i'm excited i'm okay. kind of thinking should i reach for my cards but no it's not no 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 it's, it's nothing to do with the cards <laughs> Oh, <laughs> always enough. Okay, so okay, are you ready? Yes. Okay, cool. What is your definition of God? Um, I I don't actually believe in God or in a God, even though I'm a witch um, who have lots of gods and goddesses. I believe that um, God is a man-made idea. Okay. Sorry. Um, it's all good. Um, how do you define religion and spirituality? Religion and spirituality are the same thing. Um, my husband, uh, who is not a spiritual person at all, once said that the only def- the only difference between religion and cult is popularity. If it's the majority, it's religion. If it's the minority, it's a cult, or you've got to give it like other different names. For me, a religion is an organized set of dogma Hmm. centered around spirituality, perhaps. And spirituality for me is a direct connection between you and the universe or you and your uh, preferred divine being. Oh, perfect. Um, What's the lesson that took you longest to learn? Oh, I I feel like there's so many that I'm still learning, but um, everything will always turn out fine in the end. Mm. Um, and patience. Yeah, oh still my working God, on. Yes. <laughs> still working <laughs> All on. All of those. us are. Patience comes up quite a lot. <laughs> it's a big one. It's a big one. It's a big one. Um, okay, so um, do you believe there is an end to healing? No, I feel like you can always improve. There's always more things to work on in yourself. And if you feel like taking a break from healing yourself, go and heal others, go and heal the world. There's so much more good to be done. Beautiful. Um, One final one. The world needs more of what? Empaths. Mm. Empaths, let's all come out of the woodwork. Yes, yes. Um, okay, so uh, one uh, question I normally ask everyone is, what is that one message you would like to share with someone who's going through adversity right now, who's going through their spiritual awakening or lost in life and they're struggling? What would you tell them? I, I will tell them that um, in, in flowery language, the river knoweth where she floweth. The universe will set you those challenges in order for you to be made stronger and in order for you to be able to achieve everything that you want to achieve. This is the gym of life. You're becoming stronger. I know it's awful now and I'm not taking away from the fact that it's awful now, but when it's over, you'll look back and be thankful that you are the strong person that you are because you will survive this beautifully said um how can people contact you uh i'm the easiest person to find if you um spell my name correctly that's i n for november b a a l i'm on instagram i'm kind of on facebook i'm reluctantly on twitter uh in ballot hotmail.com is me in ballot gmail.com is me in ball.com is me um so just put my name into a search engine or stand on the highest mountain in the full moon and howl and i'll come for you <laughs> 
love it i'll go to mount Sto- snowden and do that <laughs> yes i'll be listening <laughs> perfect perfect thank you so much imbal for coming on this thank podcast you. it was an absolute honor in um, interviewing you and i learned so much of you today and i'm sure it will help so many of our listeners who don't know the knowledge that you have like you know the witchcraft and the psychic readings and everything so thank you so much um no thank you for having me i've really really enjoyed our conversation and you've blown my mind quite a few times as well now Uh amazing yeah i'm I'm like a sage now (laughs) (laughs) amazing amazing thank you so much thank you thank you so much for listening to soul awakenings with madia sosan podcast i would love to know what your biggest takeaway from this conversation has been share your thoughts on my facebook and instagram madia sosan you can also check out my website madia sosan.com If you would like to watch this episode, then head over to my YouTube channel, Mads Corner, M-A-D-Z Corner. If you enjoyed this episode, then please do rate and share this with your family and friends. Thank you once again, and I will see you on the next episode.